Welcome back, beautiful people. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Now, coming up in our innovation and tech segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames, we have returning contributor Paul Caldwell, chairman and CEO of Caldwell Soames. He's joined by his good friend, Joel Bin, who is at the forefront of blockchain, IoT, or in latent terms, Internet of Things, and digital currency innovation. He's one of the founders and presidents of Blockchain Data Corporation, and you guys could check them out preliminary at bdc.guru. Now, Joel is leading a new generation of digital currency through a focus on a fiat-style financing ecosystem. Today, we're chatting the end of cash, the rise of crypto, and the future of payments. Payments evolve. Consumers adjust, and rather quickly, we're definitely in a growth window, and that's going to open up new opportunities over the next five years. Before of any of our modern-day systems, there was the gold standard, where all money produced was backed by an equivalent amount of gold in our federal reserves. Then you got cash. Cash has long been on the decline, with one UK, uh, with one UK uh, specific study citing that cash transactions have decreased nearly 35% at the start of the pandemic. The credit card, now easily accepted as part of everyday life, was the first modern leap of faith in payments, debuting in the 1950s. At its onset, the idea of paying for something instantly with the promise that you pay back a third-party institution within the month rather than right away probably seemed even more foreign than cryptocurrency does now. And today, money is flowing into crypto. Some will argue that the initial purpose of a decentralized blockchain was to level the playing field between banks, governments, and the general public after the housing crisis and Occupy Wall Street. For those that use it regularly, it's the ultimate unbiased trust-based system. Each transaction is built upon a ledger that is checked and double-checked by thousands globally to verify the authenticity of a transaction. Here to break it all down for us are Paul Caldwell and Joel Bin. Welcome to the show, superstars. Welcome, Zen. Morning, Zen. Welcome back, Paul. Let's start with you. Paul, this is such an important time in the blockchain as enterprises across markets and industries continue to increase their investment in the technology uh, globally. And organizations are forecasted to spend nearly $6.6 billion on blockchain solutions this year, which is an increase of more than 50% compared to, say, 2020. Where do you see the future of payments heading within the blockchain context? Will you be able to buy, say, groceries or even Broadway tickets with crypto? Fill us in. Zen, I think the... I think so. I mean, I believe that. I just think I believe that the um, the idea of making payments um, that way using cryptocurrencies has has struggled to this point to really find its way into the mainstream. It's still not as easy to pay, and in many, and in many cases, impossible to go buy your groceries with um, cryptocurrency. So there have been cryptocurrency cards, for example, that come out with uh, arrangements between the likes of Visa or MasterCard or whatever and a cryptocurrency company. Uh, the challenges are in the middle area where the merchant uh, services uh, processes sit. Companies like Fiserv and big companies that provide the POS devices, the thing that you put your card in or you swipe it at the cash register. That's where the challenge has been and continues to be. Because if someone returns a pair of shoes that they bought with a crypto card and that crypto underlying crypto at the time of the purchase was at, let's just say, 56,000, if it's the case of Bitcoin. And now someone returns those shoes three days later, five days later, whatever it is. And now that crypto has moved significantly off of that price point when it was acquired. The person still has to be able to return their shoes. The merchant still has to be able to give the, give the customer a refund. That happens in the merchant services layer um, who provided the, the, the basically the stability for that credit based transaction to take place um, has to somehow at sometimes eat that difference and that eat that spread. That's a negative spread. That's not a good thing. So it's not all sorted out. Um, there are some companies, one of the companies in our portfolio, OG Pay and others in the payment space that are trying to bridge that by by melding uh, uh, interoperability uh, layers through unique types of APIs that allow that to actually end up being a cash-based transaction um, whilst using uh, cryptocurrencies to settle a sale of crypto instantly onto a card so that it is cash 
all the way through and it doesn't disrupt the merchant services layer. So I, I think as that gets perfected, it becomes more and more acceptable. Beautiful. And that's why I love when you profile companies like you mentioned OG Pay, because that is a, a great, uh, a terrific trio of a platform, so to speak, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But I wanted to uh, hear from our, our friend uh, who's just so eagerly waiting to, to take the stand over there. Um, Joel, your turn. To succeed in business, uh, one must know the latest technologies and, of course, use them wisely. And this is right up your alley. Adopting <clears throat> new technologies allows companies to offer what no one is offering and providing value to customers simultaneously boosting one's revenue streams. Now, companies that embrace new tech are seen as innovators and risk takers by by the world, so to speak, and the customers. And this opens doors to new markets and brings in more investment. Where do you, you foresee blockchain really being put to its best use? And which industries do you feel are embracing the technology easiest um, and going about implementing it the best way? Well, the, the whole concept of blockchain is being designed around a mechanism that started with basically Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the idea that has spawned everything. And Bitcoin was very simple. It simulated cash and allowed for cheap electronic movement on a direct level. The technology itself is not as complicated as the concept. I find more people struggling with the idea, do I want to use a cryptocurrency rather than how do I use a cryptocurrency? I think that the technology is way ahead of the actual use today. So getting people to understand what a Bitcoin is, what socially based cryptocurrencies are and how to use them effectively is a, is a major leap in, in thinking. A lot of people are embracing it and it's growing exponentially, but it's still a very small part of the world. And as Paul pointed out, there's a lot of hurdles to overcome and we can reach into the past to take advantage of some solutions like hedging foreign exchange transactions is common in the securities industry. We can build models that are similar to that. So the solutions are really more along the lines of how do we actually <clears throat> build, build on top of old existing ideas, getting businesses to accept it and then build the technology to accommodate what they want. And that to me is, is the exciting part. We're putting together blockchain data solutions that can be used for the insurance industry, for the payments industry. You'll see that blockchain is heavily adopted by major consulting companies and all the global 500, as well as the financial services industry. In the global 500, they're using it for operational improvement, better tracking of material or a food trust, how we can safely show the evolution of when you grow something to when it gets delivered to the store and demonstrate the safety and also remediation when there's problems. Um, diamonds, shipping, virtually every major corporation is using blockchain as a means of operational efficiency. And then you have the innovators, new ways of doing insurance in a group-based method, a peer-to-peer -peer method, new ways of handling um, cash, cryptocurrency, new ways of building a variety of um, other type of methods uh, like uh, asset backs, stable coins, replacing securities that are stock certificates with electronic tokens so that they're much more portable and directly transferable. The world's wow. changing. Seems yeah. like seems like the possibilities are definitely endless here. And you know, with the possibilities in in a in an industry like this, um, Paul, this is a very fitting question. Although it's a relatively new technology, it can definitely revolutionize our hiring and payment system. And blockchain technology <clears throat> can be used to create a payment ledger. Um, to to Joel's point system for tr for tracking digital use and payments and compiling data and sales. Walk me through some of the more proprietary features a platform like OG Pay for say has versus the more traditional models that are out there and why a model like OG Pay is fitting in this digital process 
where they're able to keep in mind <coughs> blockchain, cryptocurrency and servicing, and not just the merchant, but the user as well. This is very technologically advanced stuff. Walk me through this. It is. And to Joel's point, the technology is definitely ahead of the concept um, and, and the, the, the usage of the, of the technology. Um, OG Pay is an example. It, it's an example of uh, fintech meets decentralized um, uh, transaction solution. And it's, a, it's the ability to have cash in a mobile wallet that enjoys all the benefits of, of, let's say, the banking industry with FDIC insurance on an account where you can have an account um, open. It's a wallet account. It's, let's say, just a fiat cash account. But to have the interoperability to be able to um, use that cash account to purchase cryptocurrencies or to move cryptocurrencies from one place, one exchange, let's say, onto OG Pay into a secure wallet, into, that, into a vault, into an individual wallet, and then be able to transact with that cryptocurrency um, by buying and selling things using credit or debit cards that are that are OG Pay debit cards. There's a virtual debit card. There's a physical debit card um, at OG Pay. And these transactions between the fiat and the crypto can be settled onto the card instantly because of the way OG Pay has developed its liquidity provisioning platform to provision liquidity on the crypto side, marry that marrying that to liquidity on the fiat side so that they interoperate. They're, they're almost in the, in the back end, they are separate things that come together, but to the individual OG Pay user, it's one transaction. It's, hey, I wanna, I wanna go to dinner. I have some profit in Ethereum. I can take my Ethereum. I can instantly settle some of my Ethereum profit onto my Visa card and go buy my family dinner instantly this evening or go to um, a drive through my, my family loves Chick-fil-A, for example, to give Chick-fil-A a plug here, I guess. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's instantaneous. And that's, the, that's really, we believe, what will drive that education since the technology is ahead of the concept and the consumer's thinking and the adoption rates anyway, to increase the adoption rates, we have to bring all of this in a seamless way, an easy way for a consumer to adopt this just by adopting an app, by adopting a platform, becoming a subscriber, then they can use it across that platform. You know, it's a very noisy world out there. It's a competitive environment. And OG Pay knows that. They know that why should someone put the OG Pay app on their phone when they have PayPal and Venmo and their banking apps and goodness knows what else. It's a exactly. very noisy, noisy screen, right? Yeah. So they have to build it to keep it simple and make that transaction for the consumer easy. Yes, absolutely. And OG Pay does just that. And we are now exactly at 45 seconds and out of time. And this is why we're going to have you on yet again, because... Paul, you are just that guy. You you love to just del dive in and our viewers and our listeners love to hear you because you come from such a unique perspective. Thank you for bringing on Joel. Mr. Bin, it was such a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so thank much you. for coming on. Thanks, Ed. Paul, thank, thank you again. Guys, please, 2022 is going to be the year for all. Make sure you're looking at technology. Make sure you're doing your research. Cryptocurrency blockchain is definitely something you want to think about, not only for investment, but please get involved. That was Paul Caldwell from Caldwell Soames and Joel Bin. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.